Hello. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for walking with us under the umbrella of one of our mission and vision statements of our church. Here at the Lighthouse, we believe in loving God, growing together, serving others, and extending our reach. By being part of a home group, you are saying yes to growing together with others. And I just want to say, I think that's awesome. Secondly, I would like to say welcome to this year's home group teaching. This year, we will be meeting once a month, and we will be looking at the book, The Circle Maker, by Mark Batterson. Let me encourage you, get this book. It will inspire you to live a life of faith that God still answers prayer. Do you believe that? I do. So let's dive right in. First of all, I read that the legend of the circle maker begins with a man by the name of Honey, who believed that, that God would send rain to his city in Jerusalem in a time of a devastating drought. Men of God known as prophets and the miracles that God performed uh, through them were all but gone. No longer did anyone have a dependency upon God to answer their prayers. No longer did anyone even talk to God about their situation. They simply lived in their trouble and they went on with life. But Honey was different. He was a firm believer in God. He believed that even if people could no longer hear God, that God could still hear them. And one day, Honey takes his staff and he draws a circle around himself. He, he drops to his knees. He raises his hands to heaven and he declares to God that he will not move from that circle until God sends the rain. While others look upon him with doubt, Honey has no doubt in his mind that God will answer that prayer. And God does. It begins to sprinkle. But that wasn't good enough for Honey. He then asks God to send rain that fill cisterns and pits and caverns. And God also answers that prayer. Honey was a hero to the people, but to the religious leaders of the time, they considered it blasphemy that someone would dare to put such a demand on God in that way. And although they threatened him with excommunication, the simple truth is that Honey saved his people by drawing a circle around his prayer. And he dared to believe that God could answer that prayer. I don't know about you, but that challenges me. I begin to ask myself, who am I in this story? Am I the person who doesn't depend on God for the answer uh, to the situation that I'm in? A am I the person who believes that I'm not worthy enough to put a demand on God like that? Or am I the person who dares to believe that bold prayers honor God? In the book, Mark Batterson declares, God isn't offended by your biggest dreams and boldest prayers. He's offended by anything less. If your prayers aren't impossible to, to you, they are insulting to God. You see, putting a demand on God isn't a prideful declaration. It's actually the most humbling one that you can make. When I use the phrase putting a demand, I'm not declaring that, that we should say to God, you better do this my way or the highway. I'm actually saying, that God, if you are looking for a supply to perform a miracle, then here is a demand. Let me put it to you this way. When I worked at the retail store, at Toys R Us, we would get supplies weekly of things that were running low. The software that kept our inventory would communicate to the warehouse that held all the supplies. The software put a demand to the warehouse, the warehouse supplied it, and we would get the inventory that was needed. You see, without the demand from our store, the warehouse would not be able to supply and the store would eventually go empty. Friends, listen, you, me, us, we are the store. God is the warehouse. He has stored up for us all kinds of blessings and miracles, healings, provision, and more. 
and he will send his supply to those who put a demand on it. And while this is true, we must also keep in mind that God is not a genie in a bottle. As Mark Batterson says, your wish is not his command. His command better be your wish. Isn't that so good? You see, drawing a circle starts with discerning what God wants and what God wills. Two very important things. Getting what you want isn't the, isn't the goal. The goal is to glorify God by drawing circles around his promises and his word, miracles he can get glory for, and dreams he has for you. So my challenge to you today is to do three things. Number one, find two to three promises in the Bible that, that you can circle and begin to pray for. Here's, a, here's an instance. Proverbs 22, 6 says this, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You see, this scripture is a promise for those who are currently raising their kids in the ways of the Lord. You can put a demand of protection over your children that they will serve the Lord. You're circling that promise. But this is also a promise for those who raise their kids in the ways of the Lord, but maybe their children are away from God right now. You can put a demand on that prayer because God has made that promise that they will come back to the Lord. I encourage you to find more promises in the Bible like this. Circle them and ask God to supply them. Number two, second thing I'd like for you to do is begin to write down something that seems impossible that only God can do. This is called a miracle. Do you need a financial breakthrough? Write it down and be specific of what you need. Do you need restoration in your marriage? Begin to daily pray for your marriage and ask God to help you. Do you need healing in your body? Pray for healing, but I also encourage you to find people who will agree with you in prayer about those things. And when it happens, God gets the glory. Amen. And number three, the third thing I'd like for you to do today is spend some time with the Lord and ask him, what are the dreams that he has for you? Are the things that you are involved with currently his plan for your life? Are you living a life that feels fulfilling? If the answer to these questions is no, ask God to speak to you. What are those plans and what is the best way to get on track? He will speak to you. If the answer is yes, then ask God, what are the next steps? Because I believe that God takes us from glory to glory. And when one assignment is finished, another one comes on the horizon. Also, I would say make sure you seek God to ensure that He is getting the glory. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're looking forward to all that God is going to do this year in and through you. God bless you. 